In this video, we use a hands-on code demo in Python to develop a working understanding of the delta method, a highly visual, age-old technique that enables us to determine the slope of a curve at any given point on that curve. All right, so with the delta method, if we have a curve and we would like to identify the slope at a particular point on that curve, then we can do that, well, with the delta method. So we're going to dig into that right now with a hands-on code demo. And by working through that hands-on code demo, we will eventually get to a point where we can derive from first principles the most common representation of differentiation. So the most common differentiation equation. But we'll get there after we dig into the delta method. All right, so back in our subject three, calculus one, Jupyter notebook, we're now in segment two on derivatives and differentiation. So let's bring back our old buddy, this equation here, y equals x squared plus two x plus two. We've worked with this a number of times already in this notebook, but now for the first time, we're going to put it into a function. I'm going to very creatively call that function f. So all we do is we pass in some x value and then we calculate x squared plus two x plus two. That gives us our y value, which we return out of the function, simple. So we have our x values still in x. It's our thousand x values ranging from negative 10 up to positive 10 that allows us to create nice looking plots. And so let's run that through our function f to give us a thousand y values that we can plot. So we've already made plots like this before in the notebook, but now we're going to do something new. We're going to identify the slope definitively using the delta method at a particular point. So let's say we want to identify what the slope is where x is equal to two. Our first step is to determine what y is equal to at that point. So we can pass that x value of two into our function f, and that tells us that y is equal to 10, okay? So let's call that point P, which is located at the point where X is equal to two and Y is equal to 10. We can now use the scatter method in matplotlib to plot out that exact point at X equals two and Y is equal to 10. So the Delta method that we're covering now uses the difference between two points to calculate the slope at our point of interest. So to illustrate this, we define another point, let's say Q, relatively nearby our first point P. So our first point P is at, a, at where X is equal to two and X is equal to five is not too far away. So let's put our point Q there. So at that point, what is Y equal to? So where X is equal to five, Y is equal to 37. Now we can plot out that point as well. We'll plot it out in orange. So where X is equal to five, Y is equal to 37. We use the scatter method again to plot out our point Q. And I'm using an extra argument here, Z order, to ensure that our orange point is above our blue curve. So this is just a parameter for ordering various objects that you're plotting in matplotlib. Okay, so now that we have our two points, we would like to find the slope between them. So we can use the equation for slope of a line, which we already talked about earlier in the first videos of the first segment in the subject. We talked about the slope m. So m is the most common variable that we use to represent the slope of a line. And in those early videos, we talked about, for example, a change in distance over a change in time. And we had that example of a car driving away to a shop and then going on the freeway. So we're using that same formula from back then. So the slope of a line M is equal to some change in the Y axis over some change in the X axis. So we can represent change in with this Greek uppercase letter delta. So delta y over delta x, this is the same as saying change in y over change in x. And it's also the same as saying 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So change in y is the same as delta y is the same as y2 minus y1. So we can simply plug in our values. So we have our first point, p, and our second point, q, and point p and point q have their respective x and y values. So we can just plug those in. Our first point, p, is at an x value of 2 and a y value of 10. Our second point, q, is at a x value of 5 and a y value of 37. Then working through the arithmetic here, 37 minus 10 is 27. 5 minus 2 is 3. And look at that nice round number. 27 divided by 3 comes out to 9. Cool. So we've done it here now. I did this in, in LaTeX so that you could see it nicely in the notebook, but we could just as easily do it in Python. So 37 minus 9 divided by 5 over 2 gives us our slope of the line between these two points is equal to 9. All right, so now to plot the line that passes through P and Q, there's one last variable that we need to plot a line. So we need to know its slope, but we also need to know where it intercepts the y-axis. And we typically use the variable b to represent the point where a line crosses through the y-axis. So to plot the line that passes through P and Q, we can arrange the equation of a line, which is y equals mx plus b, to solve for that y-intercept b. And so let's isolate b we can move mx over to the other side of the equation, in which case b is equal to y minus mx. So with either of the x and y values, you can now plug the values that we have into the equation. So m is obviously 9. And then just make sure that you pick the x and y from the same point. So let's say for point q, x is equal to 5, and y is equal to 37. So let's use point Q. And that gives us a y-intercept, a b-value of negative 8, meaning that the line that passes through these points that has a slope of 9 is going to pass through the y-axis where y is equal to negative 8. So now we can use the m and the b-values to calculate an entire line. So again, we'll use our thousand x values that range from negative 10 to positive 10 to allow us to plot our line. So we'll use our simple equation of a line here, y equals mx plus b, feed in those thousand x values, that gives us a thousand y values, which we can plot. So building on our plot as we go here, we now have our point p in blue, our point q in orange, P and blue, Q and orange respectively. And now we're adding in a line, an orange line that follows this function here. So we use this equation to create a line and here it is in orange. All right, so this, you know, this gives us a reasonable sense of what the slope of the curve is at this point P, but, the closer Q becomes to P, the closer the slope M comes to being the true tangent, the true slope of the curve at the point P. So let's demonstrate this with another point Q that is now much closer to P. So previously Q was at X equals five, but now let's move it way, way closer at X equals 2.1. So previously, our delta x with a q with our x of 5 and p with our x of 2, that meant that our delta x was equal to 3. But now it's much, much smaller. Delta x is going to be 2.1 minus 2, which is just 0.1. So it's much, much smaller delta x than before. So let's follow otherwise through the same process as before. So let's pass in our 2.1 value for our new Q to get what Y is equal to. Okay, so where X is equal to 2.1, Y is equal to 10.61 on this curve. 
And so let's plot that new point Q out again in orange. And yes, of course, it is much, much closer to P. And let's use the same equation as we used earlier in Python to calculate the slope M. So we have the Y value for Q minus the Y value for P divided by the X value for Q minus the X value for P. So this is delta Y over delta X, the formula for slope M that we've talked about already a couple of times in this notebook. So the slope now for our new line between these points comes out to 6.1. And we can use the same formula as we used earlier to also calculate the y-intercept b. So the y-intercept b is equal to negative 2.2 for this new line. And so we can pass our thousand x values for plotting through these new m and b values and our line function to get our thousand y values. And this is the same plot now using the same code as the last time we plotted out. But now Q is much closer to P and the slope is now much closer to being the true slope at the point P. And again, the closer Q becomes to P, that is as delta x approaches zero, so here we see that limits language starting to come in, as delta x approaches zero, the clearer it becomes that the slope m at point p, where, so that point p, the blue point, it remembers at two and 10, and as delta x approaches zero, it becomes clear that the slope of the tangent line at point P, the slope of the curve at point P is equal to six. So we're starting to get pretty close to six here, but I can demonstrate this for you pretty conclusively here by making the delta X extremely small. So first we had a delta X of three, then of point one. Now let's make delta X very, very, very small. And so let's create a scalar variable here to hold this very small number, one times 10 to the power of negative six. And let's represent our point P now as X1 and Y1. So the two coordinates, the X and Y coordinate are X1 and Y1. We've been using that already in some of the earlier notation, but now we're making it explicit in our Python code as well. So rearranging the equation delta X is equal to x2 minus x1 that we've already worked with a couple of times now. We can calculate that x2 for our point Q is now extremely close to P. So let's calculate it here. So we just rearranged to uh, solve for x2 by moving x1 over to the other side of the equation, leaving us with x2 is equal to x1 plus delta x. And so now uh, using Python code to represent that equation, we see that x2 is equal to 2. 0.00001, of course, and we've just got our little delta on it. So now truly points P and Q are going to be very close to each other. So as always, we can find our y2 value for point Q using the usual function fx. So we now have a y value for q, which we're calling y2, very, very close to 10. And to find slope, we can continue to use the equation that we introduced not too long ago. So we introduced the equation up here, talking about changes, delta y divided by delta x is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So we've already used that a couple of times to calculate slope when our points were relatively far apart. Again, to calculate slope when they were pretty close together. And now we're gonna do it again when they are extremely close together, when the delta x approaches zero. And so yet again, same equation, but it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and boom. There you can see that as we make the difference, the delta x between points P and Q, very, very small, it becomes clear 
that the slope of the curve at point P is equal to six. So I recommend now as an exercise that you pause the video and use the same delta method approach that we have been using so far uh, in this notebook to find the slope of the tangent on the same curve that we've been working with where x is equal to negative one. So we've been finding it where x is equal to two, but you can use the code that we've been using to find the slope of the tangent where x is equal to two. Do that now where x is equal to negative one. Nice. All right, and don't scroll down in the notebook because the solution is below. We'll work through that next.